Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. I've been on holiday. Look at that tan, yes. And while I was on holiday, in Spain, España, I had this radio with me, and this was from my good friend Tim, and it was an old iPod style radio, and I'm using one of those Bluetooth adapters that you plug into it, and all was very well and good. Until one evening, I had left this down by the pool, and uh, when I came back this the, in the morning, it didn't work. And it had been raining that night, uh, briefly. It doesn't really rain that much in south of Spain. Um, but this was dead, and I kind of concluded that maybe it was the rain, because you can see here, there was a patina of dust, and that's what you get out there when it rains. It's a kind of a desert. So you get the, the rain falls, and it kind of has dust in it, I guess, but you get this dusty thing. You can see the, it's very hot too, and it started the labels peeling off and stuff like that. Actually, before I do that, I do have a UK power supply because I found a local figure of eight lead. That's what I was using. I assume that was okay. I didn't have any tools with me to test it. And the other thing that happened that night was there was a lightning storm. And uh, I don't know if, you know, if they're related. I, I don't really know what was wrong with this. Um, a, um, my brother-in-law, who was with us, it's a, it was a family holiday, um, opened this up and had a, had a quick look. He had a screwdriver or something, but he said he couldn't see anything. So I'm going to have a look with tools and voltmeters and stuff and see see if there's anything in there. And this was a real, really, oh, is that a missing screw in there? No, it's in there. This was actually a really good radio, by the way. I was thoroughly impressed with its performance. It said it's a boombox with dock. Um, I do have a Bush party speaker I got for a party because I totally forgot that we had this. Um, but yeah, I have to say, out in the open, this thing was kicking out some sound. And although it does feel relatively cheap, and I think a lot of boom boxes really were relatively cheap construction, it had a big sound, a, a nice spacey, bassy sound for, um, for what it is. And you don't really get that so much these days with the small Bluetooth type speakers. So I'm gonna now surprise it all apart. Is there a secret screw? Sometimes there's a secret screw in these things, isn't there? That's keeping it all wadged together. Oh no! Is it the antenna? Let's pull that out. Try to unscrew that. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Might just have to flip this and check out all the screws. Clearly I'm a bit further along, but there's a really interesting thing here. There's a bunch of wires I've disconnected that come from the auxiliary in here and the antenna. And then there's a couple of wires which are the battery. And that's this connector here. So if you've got the battery connected, it's using the red and black wires. But one of the red wires goes to the actual mains connector on the back, which is pretty, pretty scary in itself. And it's held in with some screws and hot snot. So we'll just get rid of that hot snot so we make sure we're going to replace that. Um, but I'm just going to cut cut this heat shrink, which will be a pain to replace, so I might just bodge it with some insulation tape. But I'm really quite confused about that red wire. Because you think, what does a battery wire? It has no place being anywhere near a mains input. It just does not make sense to me, so there we go. We've got that all tr trimmed away. And that is phenomenal. Look, it actually, i am try to zoom in a bit, just off the edge here. Come on, please focus. You can see it there. Um, there seems to be something here. That's, that looks like a switch. I'm pretty sure that is a switch, but what possibly could that do? And let me just get, this is a power, and let me make sure I unplug it first. It does, you know, look, it's actually part of the mains. Look, it actually takes the battery in and out of the circuit. So when it's in, it pushes the center, the little bit of center leaf here to the normally open position. And then when you take that out, it's normally closed. Bizarro, eh? 
absolutely bizarro. I think that's something we're just going to desolder for now. But that that's very peculiar. And I can see here, look, that wire is loose in that connection. It could be that easy. I'm almost tempted just to try this before uh, disconnecting these wires, but I, I kind of feel I want to have a snoop around inside of this now. And if possible, that Bluetooth adapter I'm using from the iPod has some issues, and I'll explain what those issues are, and maybe we can get around them now. Never, it looks like the, it was never actually a, a decent connection. I don't see any indication that the uh, terminal was tinned. And I'm not going to malign Bush, but... Maybe it was never a great connection. Let's leave it at that. That's fine. So that's connected now. And we're going to plug in the power. And I'm going to put my finger here, you know, just keeping this at bay while I flip the radio. I'm going to hold the power button. And it is definitely dead. There's no indication. There's, there's a clock on this thing. So when, as soon as it's got power, the LCD activates for the clock. So then what we do is we're going to get our multimeter. It's on AC right now. In that top corner. And I'm going to then gingerly... I'm just inspecting my probes here. Because sometimes, you can see there, there's a, it's been worn away. And... You don't want to give yourself a lecky shock, that's for sure. Not on your probe. So it might be a good time to think about updating these. I'm reading 238 volts. You might just see it on the meter from where you are. So that is good. The wire is good to there. Nothing across the board. So we're not getting anything on that side. Holy smokes, there's a screw there. There's a screw sitting in the top of the transformer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see it. Yes, you do. Let's unplug it again. You know, as I'm saying, um, let's unplug it again. I'm really being cautious. That should not be there. So let's extract that. Now, I don't know if that just fell in as part of a previous attempt on this. Or the uh, radio had received a, a knock. We'll continue again now. Power's back in. Now this guy here is looking a bit funky, I have to admit. Um, we're going to put ourselves back into the AC range. Let's see if we can detect anything across any of these components here. The power supply is out, so I felt a lot more confident probing around. Looking at the circuit, interesting enough, this little coil here that looks totally crusty is OK. Um, um, and part of the circuit goes through here. You can see it's not connected on this side, it's only on this side of the board, through this component and onwards, and there's nothing. So I can only assume this component some sort of fuse or other similar type functioning device. In fact, I could feel, <laughs> as I was cutting into it, I could feel my blade dragging across it. Let's have a look. Oh, and it looks like a fuse. Could that be all it was? all along a little fusey fuse um something that will need to be removed but looking at it it says 1.6 amps looking through my collection i found this guy it's a one amp obviously a bit big for what we want doesn't matter it's almost a sanity check at this point either it'll work or it won't so i've cut out the old fuse and of course the replacement fuse isn't quite right in that it's not a PCB mount. So if you have a fuse holder, you might get better mileage. But I'm just eyeballing that up. Yeah, I don't know. I reckon I reckon I could do that. Mm. We'll give it a go, shall we? So I'm just going to apply a lot of solder to the end there. Just so you see, it went in quite nicely. That would be hot to touch, like literally, electrically hot to touch. Do not touch. Do not go anywhere near that until you work out some sort of insulator. 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 Oh, I think, I think that was our answer right there. That bad boy just popped instantly.
absolutely instantly. Wasted a one amp fuse. Yeah, that's probably about as far though as my diagnostics would go on this. Something in this circuit is unhappy and frankly, it could be any of these. You wanna watch a YouTube channel like, oh, I wanna say, is it Mr. Carlson's lab with the radios? He would know how to fix this. Now, for me, I don't know how to fix this, so I'm going to have to find something to replace this. A potential solution. Yes, this is an AC adapter that's seen better days. Um, apparently, it's a 15 volt output at 300 milliamps. I have no idea, really, if it's going to work or not, if it's enough amps, and certainly the voltage is a little bit on the excessive side, isn't it? But that being said, I think it's worth just having a little play because I wasn't using this for anything else. It was already a bit dodgy. I found a power supply actually the other day in the drawer and believe it or not, it was a two volt output. And I couldn't, for the life of me, imagine why you'd want a two volt power supply, but some things needed it clearly in the past. And if you ever do this, by the way, be careful how you throw this away because you don't want your kiddies plugging that in and electrocuting themselves. So if you're in the UK and you're doing that, pop off the earth and it won't go in the hole. Chuck it in the bin and forget about it. Right. So there is our power coming in here and then it's coming out via this little rectification going on. And uh, yeah, just ready to use. Do you want to see? So all we need to do is just, if we can get this working, of course, and we might need to regulate it down further, but just to show you, if you get your radio case, you just need to figure out a way of mounting it safely in there, probably without touching any metal work, and certainly not the metal work of the speaker. Probably, uh, yeah, we'll figure that out later. Right. Let's hook this up and see what this bad boy actually spits out. The power supply is outputting 22 volts. I need 12 volts, so I'm gonna to need to cut that down. I have a 12 volt regulator here, which is a L7812, pretty standard linear regulator. I have a little heat stink for it, which I may or may not use just because I had it lying around. I think it's cool. So I've powered this down and I'm gonna make sure we don't have any charge on any of their capacitors. I just don't wanna have a jolt. It's too early in the morning. I prepared the regulator as followed. Input, ground, output, and this is positive and negative. And I'm just gonna pop it on the board just like so. And I'm gonna leave a tiny amount of room because I wanna be able to slip a little bit of heat shrink over that output wire just to make sure it doesn't make any contact with that ground pin in the middle. And there you go. Very quick change of plan though before I solder this up any further is I decided to remove the regulator board from the actual um, transformer so that I could figure out a way of mounting the transformer safely and separately because really they don't have to be on top of each other. And looking at this, we've got these two screw holes there. I think I can build a bracket that holds that in and hopefully away from this metalwork here, although we'll put a little insulated pad there because then that can hook straight into the back and we'll more or less be stock. Okay, let's get the transformer output redirected. You can see I've put a touch of heat shrink on here. Don't want it to short out anything. And you've got to remember this is an AC now. This would be your 22 volts AC, so it doesn't really matter on the polarity. That's the heat shrink on, and I'm going to use my heat shrink tool. Jobs a good one. And what we're going to do, effectively, I've made this little plate. Um, it's not ideal because it's obviously made of copper PCB material. Just going to push those out of the way. I haven't 
check this to see if it'll fit. And something we will have to do, don't worry, I haven't forgot, we have to add a fuse into this circuit because the power supply, the replacement power supply we used did not have a fuse on it. That plate looks pretty good. Uh, I advise, if you haven't got it, get a roll of this sticky tape, which is the foamy 3M type. I say 3M type because this is, a, I think, a clone. It just says super tape, but it's the same kind of tape that sticks your dash cam on with. Um, it's very tenacious once it really sets, and it, it kind of looks like it's not going to work for a while, especially if you struggle like this now where you're trying to get the uh, film off. But once it uh, settles in, I think that foaminess, its foamy nature, seems to fill all the little gaps and it starts to really stick well. So I use that a lot, actually, I use it a lot and it's handy. So if you get a roll of clone tape, it's pretty cheap. But I'm sure there are other brands out there you could get. I'm, I'm really into Gorilla stuff right now. So maybe Gorilla do a flavour. I'm going to put that other screw in. So that should keep that transformer from bobbing around. I might need to replace these with slightly longer screws if they don't bite enough. Yeah, that is solid as hell. So we do have our two wires now coming off. These are the AC feed that will go into this rectification and regulation circuit. And that will just attach there. Um, and I'm going to figure out though first is there a way I can use this screw for putting that in. And something you might be speculating, the original power supply had a 12 volts and a 5 volts out and you know the new one now only has a 12 because we're emulating the battery. That is not a problem for us. The reason being, I believe that feed was a permanent power feed that was coming through to power the Apple port so that you could charge your iPod even when the radio was off. But because it's battery now, it's going through a different part of this circuitry here. So when the radio is off, it's in a more off. You know, there's no uh, quiescent current draw. So that's absolutely ideal for me because the problem is when this radio was off, because it was powering the Apple port and the Bluetooth receiver in there, um, my phone would hook onto the radio even when the radio is off, which is really annoying. But now when the radio it will be off, it will be off properly. So then when I turn it on, the Bluetooth will then connect and then I can play through this, this unit put a hole in this unused part of the PCB. There was a couple of pads there, but I can only assume it was going to some sort of capacitor that's not fitted on this anymore, but I'm just going to scrape away the trace because we don't want that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this capacitor onto the other side so I can mount it through that mounting hole right there. That's going to be looking cute. So there's that capacitor. I turned it into a surface mount capacitor because of course there's no traces on this side. So we're just gonna hopefully be able to line that up. I'm gonna do a test fitting as well. That's actually okay. So before we do that, let's tack on our AC wires coming from our transformer. And it's up to you again if you wanna poke through the holes or not. I'm, uh, have we had this debate? before haven't we in the streams and I don't know I'm not really a hole a hole poker I don't I don't really like to put wires through holes although I agree it probably is stronger to do so um, it's just I'm trying now for example to poke it through the holes but if you unless you've got really clean clean holes you're gonna have a problem and I, I have not cleaned these out because I can't face solder suck in a floating board but that one went through okay I mean that's not too bad at all I might put a bit more time into this one then or just a bit more solder boom <laughs> there you go who needs to poke it through when you can build it up with so much solder it becomes a rigid component so let's cut that away it's time test fit this properly now and I'm wondering now if I'm going to re rejig my regulator game here because I fitted that it was a different time when that was fitted you could see it there floating in there hmm. let me ponder that while I think about where my fuses are so we can do something about this my quest for an inline or even external mount fuse holder was folly. 
So I have made my own inline fuse, had to fabricate something up. Soldering to a fuse, by the way, can be awfully fraught. So if you want to have a go, be patient because it will try to desolder itself and make sure you buzz it out afterwards to make sure it still is conducting. Because, of course, depending on the construction of the fuse, that fuse wire itself is soldered in. And, oh, by the way, if you've ever dealt with a thermal fuse, you're going to be in for a real treat because they operate by actually having effectively a piece of alloy like solder in there that reacts to temperature so if your toaster gets too hot or too cold or whatever it will um, obviously melt and then break the circuit so have a think about how you're going to solder those ones in if you ever come across them i would advise crimps get yourself a good crimping set so we're ready now to mount this back into our connector and I did mark the terminal live because I'm not particularly familiar which is live and negative on these clover leafy type connections and I am going to poke it through the holes on this one so there we go we've got some hole pokage going through because the last thing you want ow this whole <laughs> this whole fuse thing's really hot it's holding a lot of heat that's that glass is sucking up the heat and then we're going to put in our negative which is a bit dirty let's give that a little bit of a clean first now you know don't take this as the way to do something this is just me a way of doing something right and uh, it might not be legit in your neck of the woods I don't know even if you're allowed to work on means type projects and stuff I'm sure pretty much every country is but you know if you electrocute yourself or burn down your house please 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 don't blame me for it so I'm just going to poke this through let's fetch that around that's what I want that's what I want a nice little mechanical joint there before heating it up and so on so that should all in all work quite well so before I do anything and I can hear the washing machine in the cupboard going nuts unfortunately so there's our fuse there's our cable it's going to our transformer which in turn is going to our rectification and regulation circuit which I've hit that little heat sink on because I had it and then I've soldered that onto the main board the audio ground and the power ground is the same so I just pop them on and I've attached the 12 volts to this little regulation circuit they've got here for that which again is different from this regulation circuit which again I believe powers the iPod hole um, hopefully the iPod hole work on batteries I mean that's the thing we risk right now but as I do have another Bluetooth device coming it might not be a big issue so let's flip this round and we're going to witness the moment of truth now I only have put a hundred milliamp fuse in which is a fraction of what the original one was so eh, eh, might not work who knows I think at this angle I can just about see a display so I'm gonna hit power yes I definitely can hit see something it's on um, on an OGS mode I can see it says OGS so I'm gonna push the mode round to radio yeah, there you go I can hear static noises as you hopefully can at home now I don't think without a, an antenna connect it's gonna find much but you never know it would certainly be nice for to see the blue lights of that Bluetooth module coming on so we'll have to check that I'm gonna give it a little wiggle it's a bit it was a bit broken anyway that module I'm not seeing any blue lights so something to investigate but I think for now that's probably a fix. I'll uh, just screw the back on, we'll give it a last check, and then uh, maybe in a future video we'll upgrade the Bluetooth side. Don't you worry about a thing, do do do. Don't you worry about a thing, do, baby. So there she is, all connected up. The iPod thing unfortunately doesn't work because I guess when it's in battery mode, it was relying on the iPod powering itself. Like I mentioned earlier though, it's not a problem because I do have a Bluetooth module on its way because I was never really quite happy with this. What I'm gonna do is I shall wire it to the audio input side of the iPod circuit so that I can switch it into iPod mode to get it working. But the Bluetooth module itself will be powered and activated when the main radio comes on and I'll figure that out, buzz that out. Another video for another day but for now I'm going to kick back and listen 
to the soothing sounds of the radio and uh, yeah I think that 100 milliamp fuse is more than adequate right now seems to be fine as ever thank you for watching oh and play safe bye bye